The film narrates the journey of Asari, a senior sales worker of her boss, Captain, who manages a club and engages in drug dealings. Asari, aspiring to abandon this profession, aims to pursue her dreams as a lingerie designer. However, she feels trapped, much like a caged bird, as her freedom remains elusive and her body is commodified for a price. Captain has a soft spot for her and always reserves her for his bigger clients and after closing the drug deal, he gave her for the man's pleasure. But the man abused her. Having had enough, Asari seduced Captain into sleeping with her and the next morning when he still slept, she stole a hefty amount of the money he received from the deal the previous night and fled to a new town. Or your town. She felt incredibly happy and couldn't believe it. For so long, she felt trapped like a cage bird, but now she's free. An agent found her a house but it's no ordinary house. People say it's haunted and has been empty for years. The person who helped her didn't mention this but she's just happy to have her own space. The village is conservative and tranquil, mostly occupied by families. The husbands, thinking their wives are unattractive, head to the local bar to find solace in the bottles while the wives seek solutions at the local church. The church was in Pastor Midi's hands, but it was his wife, Shadi, who truly held the reins. Religion was black and white for Shadi, with no room for mistakes. Getting pregnant before marriage or praying differently than she thought you should, you would be in for a cold stare and disapproving words. A young woman named Abeni felt the sting of Shadi's judgment after her unexpected pregnancy. Everyone at the church treated her like death, except for Shadi's own daughter, Simi. Simi had a secret of her own, a secret boyfriend and a growing bump under her shirt. But telling her mom was out of the equation, not wanting to face the same icy glare Abeni received. Asari who had now changed her name to Adire was fitting imperfectly into her new life, experiencing new things and deriving pure joy from every experience. She had a new home decorated to her taste and at night, she dressed up and went to the local bar where she caught the attention of several men but only to be dared approach her because he has the most game. With the way she was dressed and the cigarette she was smoking, he established she was a prostitute and wanted to have fun with her, but that life she had left behind. In order for him to not be embarrassed in front of his friends, she took his money and just followed him to the toilet where they pretended to have had sex. The news of Toby's activities with the sumptuous lady spread far and near with every willing man wanting to desecrate their marital vows for a taste of her. Even on social media and in the market, there are talks of her. Toby couldn't resist the charm of the bar. It became his favorite spot, not just for the drinks but also for the presence of Adire. His wife, unaware, eventually discovered their secret rendezvous one day after she failed to keep him at home. The women's group in the church labelled Adere a prostitute after Shaliwa, Toby's wife, shared her troubles with them. They saw Adere as a threat to their families, deciding to march to her house and drive her out of the village with the deaconess staying behind to pray. However, they all backed out upon realizing it was the haunted house. Shaliwa, driven by the need to save her marriage, went alone in fear. As she entered the house, a plate fell, drawing Adere's attention. After establishing who she was and why she had come, they exchanged words and Adire called her ugly. This was the bitter truth that had driven her husband to Adire in the first place and it made her cry. Adire was empathetic enough to console her and realized her husband didn't find her sexy anymore because of how she dresses. So, she gifted her a pair of lingerie and some relationship advice which went on to work exceptionally on Toby. Meanwhile, Captain hasn't had luck finding Adire. She continued to frequent the bar and had men continuously buying her drinks which she exchanged for money. With her usual companion now staying back at home, his friend had no option but to leave early. On his way, he meets their other friend, Thomas, a shy man and the one with the least game. Anyway, this time, he approaches Adire. He starts off incredibly bad and got even worse at the middle. This was a time waster and she couldn't take it. But where is there talking about his late wife and how the only woman he had to talk to since she died was his mother? Adiria felt pity for him and took his money to show him a good time, which extended to her taking him home. But they had a little miscommunication because all he wanted from her was friendship, someone to talk to. She finds it funny because she knew men would always want something, if not now, later, 
and then it would cost her more. She deduces that he might be lying about his dead wife, which he responded emphatically to the negative. However, she returned his money and asked him to leave, and he leaves after telling her, I'm really sorry that you think so little of yourself that the only thing a man would see when he looks at you is to get into your bed. At the church, Shalewa couldn't contain her happiness for getting her husband back with Adire's amazing bra. She danced energetically and a lot of people, including the deaconess, watched. After the service, Shalewa shared the reason for her joy and introduced others to Adire. The underwear she sold became the reason for fixing many broken marriages and families. Adire's business grew with more referrals, mostly from women at the church. More sales meant more work. So she spent less time at the bar. So when Thomas didn't find that day, he came over with Suya to apologize for the way he spoke to her. She realized that, unlike the village who had labored her a prostitute before knowing her, he saw her differently, and from then they started something bigger than either of them. Her relationship with the women from the parish blossomed also, with them trying to get her to come to the church and also leave their haunted house, which apparently a woman was killed in and her ghost roams the house, leaving skulls in her wake. But just like me, Adire just stared at them in disbelief. Abeni went into labor and one most women went to support her. Shade refused. Mide, who she mostly stood against, begged her to find compassion over doctrine. She arrived there with Simi after the child was born, but slowly Abeni lost consciousness and died while Shadi was busy calling for prayers. Her friend's date was what sealed Simi's decision to not keep the baby. Deji, her boyfriend, wanted her to keep it but she remained steadfast even when she could die in the process. Either way, she is dead if her mother finds out when she keeps it. During the funeral, Adire made it to the service inappropriately dressed for the function because she wasn't aware of it and Shadi, recognizing who she is, interrupts the procession to cover her up with her scarf. It was of course embarrassing for Adire. It was quite the mournful period that reminded Thomas of his late wife who suffered from bipolar and threw herself into a running car and died just some months after giving birth to his daughter seven years ago. And this time, Adire let herself feel genuinely sorry for him. Before they left together, she returned Shadi's scarf and apologized for not being aware of the burial. But Shadi asked her to keep it and scornfully informed her she wasn't welcome in the community. She might have spoken for herself because during the function Thomas's family had, his daughter and mother made her feel welcome and accepted and they shared their first kiss there. While she might have found love and someone to hold on to, Captain got a lead on her when he inspected his new girls and one of them had her signature brazier on. As a form of apology for his wife's behavior, Mide sent Simi to deliver eggs from his farm to her. Adire recognized Simi as the girl crying with her boyfriend one night she was coming back from the bar and deduces she was pregnant. Simi confides in someone else for the first time and Adire gives her some helpful advice and a warm hug that made her decide to keep the baby. Adire has a unique sense for problem solving that helps the women in the community regain their voice and confidence. Like when Shalewa had a pregnancy scare, she rerouted her worries to her passion for cake making. The women she helped also had her back, like during the Bible study when Shadi embarrassed her, causing her to leave. They fought for her, making Shadi realize she's slowly losing her flock, and the only person who remained by her side is Tunde, her PA. However, Shadi turned up the heat during Abeni's fundraising, but this time, Adire had had enough and tells her everything everyone else had been too scared to tell her. How she sought control while tearing people down and her fear of not being chosen even by her own daughter, which consequently made her blame her husband for being lenient against sin in the congregation and the community, causing her to take charge of matters in the church, which supposedly is her bet right. But her late father gave the church to him instead. He responds by saying even though she had a fire, she lacked heart and that's why her father gave it to him. In the meantime, Captain is closer to finding Adire than ever and like a hunch, in her sleep, she gets a dream of her young self being kidnapped by Captain from her parents and her failed attempts to escape. She awakens and to her shock, Captain was there. 
She begs him to let her go and the money she stole to be paid back for the years he owed her. But he hits her and orders her to dress in her lingerie. Apparently, her escape had given him an idea which he pitched to his drug supplier, which is the man who abused her. He plans on selling the drugs inside the bras she sold. Since no security would dare such a woman's bosom, what the plan is a go. Captain refused to leave the town just yet. He takes Adere to the bar with some other girls to give them a taste of what is to come. They. Thomas sees them and she tried to ward him off by pretending not to know him to protect him. But he didn't get it. And Captain hits him. His friends were also apprehended. The community immediately went into an uproar for the first time in a very long time as some courtes got into the street to retaliate. Shade owes this decadence to Adire and her husband and while they got at it, Simi couldn't handle their bickering so she shuts them up with the news of her pregnancy. Shade first gives her a resounding slap before taking her to a local nurse for abortion, refusing to listen to her husband's request to be calm. And they, Shalewa who just had an abortion since them and they all bow their heads in shame. This proves how flawlessly flawed they were as believers and the realization that they fear to feel exactly how they all made a feel. For the first time, Simi's father made a stern decision that she keeps the baby but with some conditions and for the first time, his wife just remains short but relays her grievances to Tunting. He consoles her and with determination in his eyes, he mutters repeatedly, our God is a consuming fire. Adire managed to escape and tried packing her bags to leave, but Captain finds her and puts her in a chokehold. She reached for a pressing iron and hits him with it, although she didn't kill him, but before she could leave, Tunde throws fire into the house while muttering like an insane person. A crowd quickly got to the scene, including Thomas who thought she was caught in a fire, but she surprised them all when she got out. Tunde was caught and beaten while muttering insanely. Adire, however, puts a stop to it, and even though Shade didn't mastermind it, she got blamed, but not her husband, who saw her express feelings of sadness. The next day, the women from the church, including Shade, came by Adire's house to help clean. Without much to say, they hugged each other, deciding to let their issues be water under the bridge. This is Adire's story. Her pursuit for freedom and acceptance didn't only find her love, it found her a family as big as a community. Okay, if you like the video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. It may look simple to you, but it really does help the channel out.